Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin and discuss the upcoming death cross by investigating all of the prior death crosses. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Naturally, some people don't like it when I talk about the death cross. Uh, I like to just stick to the data, and, and a lot of times I just use it as an, a, a mathematical exercise. To some degree, death crosses tell you what you already know. The 50-day SMA is going below the 200-day SMA. Obviously, it's somewhat bearish in the short term, given that before we were moving up every single day, basically, uh, whereas that has changed. So every single death cross more or less tells you what you already know. But I also thought it might be useful to systematically go through every single death cross, not cherry pick any of them, but go through every single death cross and try to understand what happened after the death cross, what happened after it. I've also seen some, some people say things like, well, you know, the 50 day is going to avoid crossing because Bitcoin's gonna have a crazy pump. Uh, some pretty big influential people in the space have been saying that. And again, I, I've, I've been pretty clear the whole time what Bitcoin would have to do to avoid it. At this point, the price of Bitcoin needs to go up about $3,000 per day on average for the next week. If it does that, and you know it pumps by 20K within a week, and next week we're looking at the price of Bitcoin and it's close to $60,000, then yeah, like maybe we'll avoid the death cross. But to just blindly say that they're going to avoid each other is not really doing anyone any favors. It's, it's more or less just spreading, spreading something that has no basis in, in, in you know, evidence in the charts. Because again, if you if you go back and look 50 days, for a while I think people thought that, you know, this was starting to turn up. But as we showed you guys, no, it's it's that it's starting to it's you know it's starting to replace these values with these ones over here. But now we're we're comparing we're we're getting rid of some of these other more bullish prices close to 60k as we head up um, over the next week or so. And so the 50 day SMA is going to keep going down, whereas the 200 day SMA is going to basically keep moving up at a fairly steady pace. So if the price of Bitcoin continues to close around these levels, we should have a death cross around the 21st of June, probably plus or minus a couple of days, depending on exactly what the price does between now and then. Obviously, we don't know exactly when it'll occur because if Bitcoin pumps to you know 45K tomorrow, then it might push it off by a couple of days. If Bitcoin drops to $30,000 tomorrow, then it's probably gonna come a little bit sooner. So it's hard to know exactly, but I would say maybe around the 21st of June, plus or minus a couple days, if the price of Bitcoin continues to close at around $39,000 for the next several days. So with that said, I thought it might be useful for us to just go through every single death cross, okay? And, and I, again, I'm not trying to spread you know FUD or anything like that. It's just a, a mathematical exercise, a useful exercise to see, well, what has happened in, in prior ones? And again, a lot of times, a lot of times in the short term, at least, the, the price of Bitcoin might pump. The first death cross was here. And you can see that at this death cross, the price did not have any consequential pumps, okay? In fact, it dumped another 59% pretty immediately, okay, pretty immediately it dumped another 59%, which is very unlike what happened in other death crosses in the short term. For instance, at this death cross, you can see the price was around this level. It did immediately dump, but then over the next several weeks, it actually pumped 53%, okay? So we, 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 in, fact, we in fact saw a 53% pump over the next several weeks, but to be fair, the general downtrend remained the same, okay? Now, there's also another death cross in here because this is one where we had, you know, we had this move to the upside after this cross, it moved up, but then ultimately we printed another one. After this one, after this one, it was more or less just down another 66%. But what we could say is after a major move to the upside, so we can maybe split these up into two separate ones, after a major move to the upside, what happened? Um, and after you know, after this death cross, it bled by about you know the price of Bitcoin bled by about 50, 60 percent or so over the next several weeks. Uh, after this death cross, it went up about 50 percent immediately. But if you just take say the price at the time of this death cross and look to where it finally went down to, it was about 50 to 60 percent again, depending on where you take it exactly on the wicks. 
then you have other types of death crosses that occur during reaccumulation phases. And obviously this would be the best evidence to say, well, maybe it doesn't have to immediately lead to another 50% decline. What if this just is a, an, an accumulation phase where you know, the price of Bitcoin is just sort of going up and down for a while? And, and when, you get that, you'll, when you get that natural volatility, you're gonna have crosses of these moving averages as we saw in 2015 and as we saw in, in um, 2019. Okay, but before we get to those, we had this death cross here, which again, in the short term, actually led to a 60% pump. But again, the overall trend was down. The overall trend was down. And the price at this point until the bottom was about a 50% drop. Okay, about a 50% drop. Then you look at, at 2019 and you say, well, we had a death cross here and we had an immediate pump. And again, at that death cross, the 50 day, we actually immediately pumped about 40%. But again, the general trend remained down. Okay, it's not like it's not like we immediately pumped and put in a new alt or a new local top. It's not like we went above 14K. We still, you know, we still extended the downtrend for a little bit, but it wasn't nearly as significant as some of the other ones we had seen. But this is what I'm also talking about is you can have these reaccumulation phases where maybe it doesn't have this immediately immediate capitulation. Obviously, this could have played out differently, potentially if there had not been a pandemic. Um, I mean, if this if this weren't here, if this March drop were not at this point, then this would have essentially been close to the low point. Maybe we would have had another 12% drop or so if we didn't have the, the, the March crash in 2020. But again, you had another you had another death cross. So we had a death cross here and then we had a death cross here. But after this death cross, this is obviously the, the biggest evidence that people like to point to that it you know doesn't necessarily mean anything and that we're about to pump up you know a crazy amount. What I would say in general is there's there's two types of death crosses okay there's there's a type of death cross that you get when you are in an in a reaccumulation range and it you know it typically is after a major you know, i mean it could be after a golden cross a recent golden cross like a golden cross a golden cross a death cross a golden cross a death cross and a golden cross this one is it seems like it's somewhere in between okay like I think there's a good chance that the market cycle is going to continue a lot longer and even in, well into 2022 and maybe beyond. But at the same time, we also recognize that there, the probability of having an extended accumulation phase or a reaccumulation phase like we had in, say, uh, you know, 2019, I, I feel like there's there's evidence for that. OK, so you could say it's a mix between, say, a market cycle top death cross and a and a um, and just a natural reaccumulation phase death cross when you've just been moving sideways for a long period of time because this is I mean this is coming after a pretty significant move up this was a 20x move up okay a 20x move up the first death cross after a significant move is noticeable okay it's easy to write it off and say well it doesn't mean anything and again maybe you're right but at the same time we also can just look back to see what it has meant in the past. So what I would say, as I've said before, is that Bitcoin needs some type of reaccumulation phase before it can ultimately head to $100,000. This is why I, I don't think that we're going to see an immediate recovery to 60K in a week uh, to avoid the death cross. I don't think that's going to happen. But I could see, you know, I could see some type of long reaccumulation phase that Bitcoin goes through before it can continue to pump to new all time highs. Um, now, to give you an idea, what would be the, you know, the most bearish case I could see? Well, again, I mean, even if you look at if you look at prior moves after a death cross, I think, you know, the most bearish is probably a 50 percent drop, which would essentially take us to 20K. Am I saying that 20K has to happen? Of course not. Of course not. I, I certainly wouldn't be waiting to buy any Bitcoin below 20K. I mean, I, I would I would certainly not wait to do that. But if it did go below 20K, I think it would represent a, a crazy opportunity that likely won't present itself. I mean, I mean, it probably won't present itself. I would say that, again, my general thinking on the market is that we will need some time to reaccumulate. And that while there can be, you know, $5,000 moves, $10,000 moves, I don't think we're gonna see a sustained move to 100K by September or you know by this summer I really don't think that's going to happen I mean if if you're in the camp that thinks we're going to go to three hundred thousand dollars by September then you're basically needing to see a hundred K within the next month or so I think the likelihood of that's relatively pretty unlikely especially given the fact that we are getting a death cross um, it doesn't really seem to be a you know it doesn't really seem to typically be the indicator that 
implies after a major rally, it doesn't tend to be the indicator that implies a major sustained rally above the prior all-time high. The only counterpoint, the main counterpoint is just, well, this death cross here, sorry, this death cross here marks the beginning of a rally. It did, but it was also coming off a reaccumulation phase where we had several, you know, we had a golden cross over here, we had a death cross, we had a golden cross, we had a death cross. This was, this was different than coming off a major rally like this one. It was different than coming off a major rally like this one. And it was different than coming off a major rally like this one. So I think there are some some subtle differences between between the two. And as I've said, I think we, we may be a, a mix between between both types, right? Like it it's not like it's not like we went up hundred X like we did last cycle. It's not like we went up, you know, five hundred X or seven hundred X like prior cycles. We've gone up about twenty X so far. Again, in line with diminishing returns, you could say that that is a diminished return. I do think the ultimate market cycle peak is higher than where we currently are, but still a diminished return as measured from market cycle bottom or as measured from the halving. So the way I look at this is I say, you know, in a, if, if I were to operate in a deterministic way and say, I think Bitcoin's going to go to 100K, which I do think it's gonna to go to 100K eventually, then whatever comes over the next few months, whether it is just simple, you know, reaccumulation at the same prices, whether we go down, whether we kind of chop up for a little bit, then come back down, whatever happens, you know, I, I, I wouldn't necessarily think that it makes a huge difference. I mean, it, it really doesn't make a huge difference if as long as you have the right mindset about Bitcoin and that it's not a day trader's game. I mean, I certainly don't day trade Bitcoin. I, I buy it and hold it for the long term and I occasionally take profits when we go through bubbles, okay? And I did take profits during this move and this was covered on the premium list. Um, so again, if you want access to the premium list and how I navigate these markets, make sure you check out into the cryptoverse.com. So, so looking at the market now, now that we've had this cool off phase, uh, you know, I, I think the death cross will be interesting to see what the market does because a lot of times, you know, a lot of times after when you get a death cross, you can actually see a pretty significant move up to the upside. I mean, this this death cross had a pretty significant move to the upside. One thing that might be interesting to look at is to look at the death cross and and see where it crossed. So this one crossed at 575, and then it had a rally that took it up to around 20% higher than where the death cross occurred. Not the price of Bitcoin at the time of the death cross, but the actual price where the 50 day crossed the 200 day, it increased by about 20%. After this move, after this one, they crossed at around $9,300 and then it rallied about six or 7% from that level. Okay, here they crossed at around 9,000 and they and it rallied about 16, 17% from that level. So I mean, imagine imagine they cross here at say, I don't know, like 42K, 43K. If it were to rally from that point, like say 6% or so, maybe 46K, if it were to go up to say a 20% rally, that would put us just over 50K. Um, so while death crosses tend to tell you what you already know, we've also seen some rallies, come, at least short-term rallies come on the back of death crosses. This is another common misconception is some people say, well, you know, a lot of rallies lead to, to rally, or a lot of death crosses, prior death crosses has, have led to rallies. And I would agree they have, but I mean, this is not necessarily a rally that you wanna like call, you know, use as your evidence because it was pretty short lived. I mean, it was pretty short lived before the downtrend continued. So I think the main evidence that you would look towards would just be this one, which was coming after a, I mean, it was coming after a, a pretty significant capitulation of over 60% that was not from an all-time high. I mean, it, it literally capitulated from around $10,000, which was already half the prior all-time high. So again, I don't want to cherry pick any single, any single death cross. I just want to go through all of them again and show what has happened after prior death crosses. I mean, again, after this death cross, we, we bled for a few more months before moving back up, major move back to the downside, and then the bull market started. Um, after this death cross, I mean, we actually didn't really do a whole lot for a while before having a capitulation. Anyways, I think that each market cycle will be somewhat different and this one's likely going to be something in between where it's not going to be a death cross necessarily. That means we're in for, you know, two years of bearish slash reaccumulation times. On the contrary, I think it's likely an indicator that we are at least entering, again, a sustained reaccumulation zone. Uh, that will not last only a couple weeks, but will last several months and will ultimately be needed for us to have any hopes of making it to $100,000 this market cycle. 
hopefully this video was useful. I just wanted to go through systematically, not trying to spread any, any unnecessary rumors, but just look at the math. Let's talk about what needs to happen. Remember, to avoid the death cross, the price of Bitcoin needs to go up over $3,000 a day on average for the next week. Otherwise, we will be getting a death cross on approximately June 21st, plus or minus a couple days, depending on exactly what the price of Bitcoin does between now and then. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Remember, we do have t-shirts, so you can find a link to that, the merch store, store.intothecryptoverse.com. Make sure you guys get yourself an Into the Cryptoverse t-shirt. Thank you guys for tuning in. Definitely subscribe to, to the channel and give the video a thumbs up. Click the bell icon to turn on your notifications, and I will see you next time. Bye.